Hey everybody, it's time to start talking a little bit about file paths, which are very, very critical to understand. We're going to be using file paths throughout the next four, uh, the next four months or the next few months extremely often, and they are very, very important. Um, now specifically, there are two different kinds of file paths, one of which you've, you're probably already very familiar with, and those are absolute file paths and relative file paths. Okay, absolute file paths and relative file paths. Um, but before I really break those down and explain them to you, I want to ask you, what is the difference between these two sets of directions to Codify Academy? Okay, hopefully you gave it a little thought. And um, what we really come to is this first one here is a very well-defined address, right? It tells us where Codify Academy is or where to find it no matter where we're standing, no matter where we are, no matter where, um, where we're looking for it from, whether we're in Texas, in Florida, in Alaska, or just down the street, right? This tells us definitively where Codify Academy is. It's an address. Versus these directions, which tells us where Codify Academy is in relation to a very specific place. There is a building, in fact, where I am right now, where if you make a left out the door, walk two blocks, then the third building down on that block is Codify Academy, or is where Codify Academy is located. There is one location in the world where this is the correct way to direct somebody to Codify Academy. Does that make sense? If I were anywhere else right now, these directions would not make any sense. They would not lead me to my destination. I hope that makes sense. Given that, we have the same distinction between absolute file paths and relative file paths. Whereas this address is an absolute address, an absolute location for Codify Academy. This is directions to Codify Academy relative to a certain starting location. Okay, it's the difference between telling somebody um, the address of the White House as opposed to, oh, it's right down the street. Make a right out the door and you can't miss it. Okay? In principle, that's the difference between absolute and relative file paths. Now, what do they look like, realistically? They look like this. Okay? Now, this file path here on the left is an absolute file path. It tells us we're, uh, this, our main.css file is located in the C drive and then inside the users folder in there, the Evan W folder inside the users folder on the C drive, the desktop folder inside the Evan W folder inside the users folder on the C drive, the template folder, the CSS folder, and then inside there is main.css. Okay? This file path works as long as I'm on my own computer. On my computer, on my C drive, in my users folder, in my Evan W folder, on my desktop folder, in my template folder, in my CSS folder, is this main.css document. But, as soon as I'm done building my website, what am I going to do with all of these files? I know we haven't really talked about it, but if this is my template folder and, I'm, and, and I were coding a project in here, when I am done building my website, I am going to take this whole folder and all of its contents and place them on a server somewhere. In doing that, 
it's going to allow somebody else over the internet to access my site. No matter what computer they're using, they could use their phone or tablet and access my site. If this folder is located, has been moved to a server somewhere else. Somewhere not my computer is the point. Okay, so if I use this absolute file path here in place of my href attribute here in the link tag, which connects my main.css to my index.html, well, to be honest, it will work as long as I'm on my own computer. But as soon as I finish coding and I push this all onto a server, my browser or anybody's browser will no longer be able to find my style sheet using that absolute file path. As a result, we use what we have here, which is in fact a relative file path. A relative file path. And once again, a relative file path, just like this set of directions up here, directs us to our destination relative to our starting point wherever we are standing right now it tells us go around the corner and it's the first door on your right or um, you know cross the street walk one block and it's it's right on your left these are relative directions these this is a relative file path okay so ask yourself what is the starting point for this relative file path. If these are the directions to arrive at this file, what is the starting point? Hopefully you guess correctly that the starting point is our index.html. So from the index.html to main.css the directions are look for the nearest CSS folder, go inside it and look for main.css. Look for the nearest CSS folder, go inside it and look for main.css. Okay? Now the follow up question is how do you know that the index.html is the starting point? Or what determines the starting point of a relative file path? The answer to that is where that path is written. Okay, we've written this path inside our index.html file. So pretend our index.html is home, main.css is the nearest Starbucks, and we want to know how to get to the nearest Starbucks from our home. Well, we go outside, we walk to the corner, and make a right, and it's right in front of us. Those directions, if we were anywhere other than home, would not work. Okay? So that's a relative file path, and that's how we use relative file paths. Now, last question, I have a file called codify.png, an image file, codify.png located inside my image folder, my img folder. Inside my index.html, what would be the relative file path to access that image? Take a moment and give it a try. Hopefully, you came up with something like this img forward slash codify dot png from our index.html look for the nearest image folder go inside it and find codify dot png same principle here you will need to bear this in mind because in the future you will probably be dealing with more complicated file trees and you will need to know how to get from some point A to some point B. Further, you may not always be writing these file paths inside the index.html. 
So if you change the starting point of a file path, are you going to be able to still write a path that helps you navigate from your new point A, whatever that is, to point B? All right, so it is important to me that you understand absolute versus relative file paths, that you understand how relative file paths work and how to use them. We're going to get a little more practice in the next video where we talk about how to add images, how to really add images to our index.html. Okay? For uh, just to close out, the way that I have found it helpful to think of relative file paths is like a treasure map. Historically, treasure maps were unlabeled. The reason being, people would, or pirates specifically, would bury their treasure, draw a map with no labels, but maybe some landmarks for them to recognize, and carry that map with them. So whenever they needed to dig up their treasure in the future, they could find it but only if they knew exactly where to start. So if another pirate got a hold of this map, they wouldn't know which island this is. They wouldn't know which coast this is. They wouldn't know which direction is north. Maybe north is down here, and the pirate who drew the map deliberately reversed everything. The map only works if you know where you're starting from. In the same way, a relative file path like CSS forward slash main.css will only work if we are starting in the correct place. It will only lead to treasure if we're starting in the correct location. If we're starting someplace different, we need to change the map. We need to change the path. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, stick around and we're going to look at how to add images to your HTML.